Okay, so this is 4.2, which is mean value theorem. I think in the last video, I said that we were going to be looking at relative extrema in 4.2, but that's 4.3. So this one is mean value theorem. So we've looked at this example before. This was way back in chapter two. So if it takes two and a half hours to go 108 miles from Poolsville to Culpeper, Virginia, what is the average speed? So to get average speed, you are going to do the total distance that you went divided by how long it took. And you can plug that into the calculator and figure out the decimal. Um, but that is going to be your average speed and that would be miles per hour. So did I have to be going exactly that average speed at some point during the trip? Yes. In order to get that as your average speed, because your oops, because your um, speed is going to be continuous, you are going to have to go through that exact mileage at some point during your trip. So essentially, that is what the mean value theorem is. There is a mean value theorem for integrals and a mean value theorem for derivatives. The mean value theorem for derivatives is much more common. So this is the one that we do want you to have memorized. And when we get to mean value theorem with integrals, we'll go over the similarities between that one and the one for derivatives. But this is the one that does often show up in free response problems on the AP test, where you need to justify using the mean value theorem. So the conditions of the mean value theorem say that the function has to be continuous at every point on the closed interval. So we have to include the endpoints for continuity. It needs to be differentiable at every point on the interior. So it does not need to be differentiable at the endpoints. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Then, so if both of those are true, then there is at least one point C in the open interval, so it cannot be happening at the endpoint. It has to be somewhere on the interior at which this is true. So the first derivative is equal to the slope between the two endpoints, which really means the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. So there is some point where the derivative is equal to the slope between the endpoints. So that is what the mean value theorem says. It is something that, <clears throat> that you are going to need to use as justification a lot of times. And so we will definitely do a lot of free responses. I'll go through one example of how you actually calculate this stuff with the equation in the mean value theorem and how you might justify. But we will do a lot more examples as the year goes on. So here's one example. It says to show that the function satisfies the hypothesis of the mean value theorem and then to find the solution to that equation on this interval. So usually this is not the way the questions are worded where it specifically says show that the function satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem or the hypothesis of the mean value theorem. It's usually more in word problems and so if you're going to use the mean value theorem as justification you need to say this first part that we're going to say. So you're usually not directly asked to do it. You just need to be able to recognize that in your justification, you need to include it. So we're not doing any kind of proof. So really show just means explain why. So we're explaining why this function satisfies the hypothesis of the mean value theorem. So is it a different color? So this function is continuous. You don't need to prove why, you just need to understand that this function is continuous. It is continuous on the interval. Okay, and it's continuous on the closed interval. It does happen to be continuous everywhere, but in general, these don't have to be continuous everywhere. They just need to be continuous on the closed interval that they're giving you. And this is also differentiable. Differentiable on the open interval. It does happen to be continuous on the closed interval as well, and it is continuous everywhere. But this is the only thing that needs to be true in order for us to be able to use the mean value theorem. Continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. So then that's the first part that's showing that it satisfies the hypothesis of the mean value theorem. Then to find the solution, I need to first take the derivative. So the derivative of that function is 2x. 
and we need to find the slope between the two endpoints. So f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. So if I plug 2 in, I get 4. If I plug 0 in, I get 0. So the slope between the two endpoints is 2. So I am setting the first derivative equal to the slope. So this is happening at x equals 2. Now the question does say to find a solution c. So I wanted to show it to you in terms of x just because I found the derivative in terms of x. But in general, you want to be careful with your uh, variables because if x is used for something else, then you just want to be careful with the variable. So really what it probably should be is 2c equals 2, so c equals 1. That's not something you lose points for, but you do just want to be really careful with your variables. So this is, again, something you are going to have to do in free responses a lot. So we will do a lot of practice with writing out the first part, so writing out that a function satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem because they are going to be very picky about the wording in questions in, your, in the justification that you gave in order to get full credit. So there's two things that you do with mean value theorem. One is going to be saying, explaining why a function actually, can, you write, why you can use the mean value theorem with a function. And so you have to talk about the conditions of the mean value theorem. And then the other one is actually solving. So that's like this one.